How is everybody doing today? Welcome back to another episode of The Banker Next Door. I am your host, Dr. Joe Berquist. And today I wanted to talk about the big merger that was just announced between Capital One and Discover Card. And I, so I wanted to bring you guys a little bit of information here. I'm going to bring in a little article here. So this is an article from S&P Capital Intelligence, and it's called Tough Regulatory Review Threatens Aggressive Capital One Discover Closing Timeframe. So Let's take a look at this. So uh, Capital One Financial has a steep climb ahead for regulatory approval of its $34.97 billion acquisition of Discover Financial Services. So the McLean, Virginia-based company told investors it hopes to close the transaction late 2024 or early 2025, but many industry experts consider that time frame aggressive and unlikely as it faces some regulatory hurdles. It is the second largest U.S. bank deal announced since 2008, and it would catapult Capital One to be the eighth largest U.S. bank in terms of assets from its current rank of 12th. Moreover, the transaction involves a target currently under regulatory orders. The deal is also already facing opposition from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle and from the National Community Reinvestment Coalition, a group that advocates for fairness in lending and reaches uh, benefit uh, benefits agreements with financial institutions. So all of those hurdles come as regulatory reviews of U.S. bank deals have become tougher under the past three years, leading to prolonged deal closing timelines. To ensure regulatory approval, regulators must be convinced the transaction promotes com competition instead of stifling it, and that Capital One will remedy Discover's ongoing regulatory woes. Um, our sense is that this potential deal could ultimately secure regulatory approval, but it would face gale force headwinds from a Washington that is deeply skeptical of consolidation. Um, anxiety regarding customer facing issues in election year and reticent regards shifting in the payment ecosystem. Um, we would expect public hearings on this deal if announced and a fair amount of inquiries activity from Capitol Hill. These are these hurdles can be cleared, but each of them adds complexity to the process and time and time to the timeline. However, the transaction has some factors that could work in its favor during the regulatory approval process, such as increasing competition in the credit card space, a lack of branch uh, closures and Capital One's stronger regulatory track record. So, so you basically get into the rest of the article gets into questions of competition, and then we get into the you know kind of differing regulatory track records. So, in other words, Capital One has a spectacular track record, whereas Discover's recent issues have had like in September 2023, Discover found itself subject to a consent order to improve its consumer compliance management system and related corporate governance and enterprise risk management practices. Before that, Discover disclosed in July of 2023 that it found card misclassification issues where it had mistakenly put some credit card accounts into the highest pricing tier uh, since mid-2007. Discover has uh, accrued a $365 million charge on its balance sheet to reduce impacted merchants and acquirers. Um, it's just going to take more time to demonstrate that Capital One can remedy it these issues and continue on the path of correction. Um, it's just another reason why it's just going to take longer. Um, so that's kind of a very interesting thing. So you have a lot of things going on there. So you have regulatory issues of the companies. So regular, so Capital One's looking real good. Discover Card, not so much. They've got some regulatory problems. Then you have the overall regulatory environment around mergers and acquisitions. Um, it has been very difficult for merger and acquisition deals to get done on time under the Biden administration. Um, deals that normally would take, say, six to 12 months are probably going out two years, 18 months, two years. I mean, so there, there's definitely a longer lag time in getting things done. Then you add to it just, you know, kind of it's an election year and some of the other issues going on there in the background. So this deal faces a lot of headwinds and a lot of challenges. Um, you know, obviously the lawmakers in Washington are going to have a lot of questions about what's going on there and everything. Here's what I think is the bigger issue with all of this. Uh, Capital One and Discover Card, they get put together now for the first time Visa and MasterCard, they have a real 
legitimate competitor. Basically, you've got Visa and MasterCard are the two dominant players. They're like the Coke and Pepsi. Okay, they're the dominant players. And then American Express has always had kind of this third spot kind of on the side, but they, they've always had this kind of interesting agreement where it's like, you know, American Express kind of does its thing over here and they've learned to kind of live and cooperate and work together. Whereas American Express makes a nice, has a great business and doesn't really encroach too much on Visa and MasterCard and Visa and MasterCard kind of rule the, rule the jungle, so to speak. They don't, they don't, they don't get anything. Now this um, Capital One and Discover that they're going to create a legitimate competitor to Visa and MasterCard. You you now have another major player on the field that can legitimately take a lot of business away from them. So was I shocked that with, uh, you know, undoubtedly a lot of the money that Visa and MasterCard throw around on Capitol Hill, was I shocked that lawmakers immediately came running out and to cry like, oh, this deal, it can't happen. We can't let this go through. No way. We're not doing this. We're not letting this happen. This is a competitive issue, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, um, so I don't think for a minute behind the scenes that Visa and MasterCard would be happy about this deal uh, going through because it creates a real player, real competition for the two of them. So, but then let's look at some other things here. So um, Emily McCormick from uh, Bank Director, she wrote this great piece on this deal. So I just want to I'll read some of this to you. So, you know, earlier this week, Capital One Financial Corp announced its planned acquisition of Discover Financial Services. The deal would create a financial services behemoth if it can get a blessing from regulators. So Capital One has set an aggressive deadline, expecting to close the transaction later this year or in early 2025, but regulators have been taking longer to close deals. As Bank Director explored last month, um, do, 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 do. It gives an example of a couple of banks, uh, and and it says basically it took it took this one bank basically 17 months to get across the finish line. So a combined Capital One and Discover would dwarf 54 billion this other 54 billion dollar bank. And as of the fourth quarter of 2023, the two companies combined deposits total 457 billion. Uh, which could put their banking operations just behind U.S. Bank Corp. Uh, Capital One would outrank the industry for credit card loans. Let me say that again. Capital One would outrank the industry for credit card loans at an estimated $250 billion based on 2023 figures. So large complex deals typically get more scrutiny from regulators, to be fair, to fair. Uh, due to concerns about financial stability and competitive effects. Based on recent proposed rulemaking from the OCC, uh, Capital One's primary regulator, there's little indication that regulators want to speed up the M&A approval anytime soon. The proposal would nix a longstanding policy where certain deals were automatically approved within 15 days of the close of public comment if the OCC failed to act, according to a law firm, Jones Day. Capital One, already one of the biggest banks in the country, will just get bigger if it integrates Discover. Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren quickly objected to the deal, urging regulators to block it immediately. <laughs> what, what did I just say? Um, National Community Reinvestment Coalition CEO Jesse Van Toll also opposed the combination in a statement this week, citing antitrust concerns and Capital One's terrible track record on compliance. The bank paid a $390 million civil money penalty tied to Bank Secrecy Act violations in 2021 and $800 million in 2020 due to information security gaps. Discover has also had recent skirmishes with its regulators. In a, in a September 23rd consent order, the FDIC cited uh, purported consumer compliance deficiencies. So combining Capital One and Discover may, take, may make strategic sense, but that alignment won't matter if the two companies can't convince regulators to close the deal. So that is a very good point that uh, Emily makes there at the end of the article, but it did, but this article just kind of reinforces what I just said. You just saw like, you know, lawmakers came racing out to decry the deal and say, no, 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 this can't, this can't happen. Uh, she said that, uh, you know, the, the, the merger here would turn capital one into a financial behemoth. They would make them the largest credit card company in the banking, you know, sphere it would make them the eighth largest bank in the United States. Um, they would have 457 billion in, in deposits alone. Uh, that's not assets, that's deposits. Um, you know, it would make them, it would make Capital One a juggernaut, uh, like I said, big enough to compete with MasterCard and Visa. So obviously there's going to be a lot of pressure not to get this through. Now, could this deal still happen? Yes, I think there's still a very good chance. I, I would give, I would give this deal uh, probably, 
I'd give it 60, 40, 60, 40 odds that it goes through and actually passes and gets done. So, you know, we'll have to keep an eye on it and we'll have to see what happens. Um, but is this deal going to get done as quick as they think it's going to get done? No, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that happens. I, I think, I think this deal probably takes an easy, uh, 17, 18 months to get, to get finalized. So probably toward the end of, uh, uh probably toward the end of 2025 is probably what I would say that they're realistic looking at if, if they're, if they're able to pull this thing off. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think a lot is going to depend on the election. You know, if uh, if you know if Trump wins, the, the administration will change over. You know, Republicans have a tendency to be more more lenient with these things. Um, so if that happens, then, you know, and they don't see a problem with it as far as competition wise, then, you know, it could could sail through, could get done maybe earlier in 2025 with what they're thinking. But uh, but either way, I still think it's going to take longer than they're anticipating to get it done. But uh, but we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. We'll keep an eye on it. I just think it's it's something that was obviously a huge merger announcement. It's one of the biggest ones since I think they said what two thousand seven or since two thousand eight. One of the biggest deal announcements since two thousand eight. So it's it's a huge deal. It's uh it's that this is an earth shift, a ground shifting uh, event, if you will, in the in the uh, credit card business. So um so we'll just have to say, like I said, we'll keep an eye on it and we'll see what happens. So um. You know, I hope everyone uh, enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. That always helps the channel. Uh, you can always check us out on YouTube, Rumble, and all major podcast platforms. And I hope you'll go to the uh, Banker Next Door website at www.thebankernextdoor.com and check us out. And make sure to please leave any comments below. I love to get back to people. And, uh, and like I said, uh, check out some of my other episodes, and I will be back again real soon. Thanks, everybody.